We're going to be the only Apostles who can stay standing. <clears throat> We're going to be here in Nebraska. So, I guess a friend of Nebraska that has a holy house here. And the epistle for this, or it's not the epistle, we're going to read only the gospel for today, the Feast of St. Dominic, Pagan and Saint, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Let your loins be girt and lamps burning in your hands, and you yourselves like unto men who wait for their Lord, when he shall return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom he is in the Lord when he shall come, when he cometh, shall find watching. Amen. I say to you that he will gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and God passing will minister unto them. And he shall come, and if you come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. But this know ye, that if the householder did know at what hour the thief would come, he would surely watch, and would not suffer his house to be broken open. Be you there then also ready, for at what hour you think not, the Son of Man shall come. That's where the word of today's holy gospel. Dear Father, Son of the Men, today the feast of poor Saint Dominic, one of the great saints in our holy church, who when he was in the womb of his mother, she had a dream that she didn't have a child in her womb, but had a dog. And that this dog had a brand, a fire brand in his teeth, with fire on both sides. And the dog went running through the entire world, and the whole world caught on fire. And he brought the, and he cut, lit the whole world on fire. And so that St. Dominic, uh, who gave us the Holy Rosary, and who gave us St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, it did light the entire world on fire. He lighted the world on fire with the deepest knowledge of God, the deepest knowledge of our faith through St. Thomas Aquinas, his son, and lit the world on fire through the Holy Rosary, which spread throughout the entire world. And so that there was not a, a um, the, the, man, the one inside the womb of his mother was, was a dog running this fire, running with a firebrand. And we see here that what is this fire? Our Lord says, speaks of the fire. It says, at that time, the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, Let your loins be girded lamps burning in your hands, and you yourselves like to men who wait for their Lord. And so there's an important element concerning this holy fire. We are always supposed to carry a fire when acolytes are ordained. To the ac acolytes is of the highest of the minor orders. They put their hands upon a candle, and they touch a candle, and the bishop says to them, <clears throat> Will you see this power from this candle? That you are now going to be as priests of God, one of the steps of the priesthood, and you are to walk about in the sanctuary. And that you must walk about in the sanctuary as a light. So that when it comes to our holy faith, it is the light of faith. We talk about the light of faith. But the problem with our light of faith is that the light of faith cannot burn on its own. The light of faith requires fuel. It requires something to burn. The light burns if there is a candle. And the candle is able to make the light burn if the candle melts, if the candle is, uh, is destroyed. And as the candle is destroyed, the fire continues to burn. And so that our, a fire is something which can never live by itself. There has never been a fire that is just burning. All fire must by be coming from something. All fire must consume something. And we have multiple examples in the sacred scripture of what is the fire and the light of our faith. And the fire and light of our faith must burn inside of human flesh. It must burn inside of, of real men. And so Dominic carried the fire. And then also, and what is this fire? What is the purpose of this fire? Why do you carry a fire? And our Lord Jesus Christ then said, you must be as servants who wait in the night. So you don't need the candlelight during the day. But you need the candlelight during the night. So the first thing we note about the fire is, we need this fire because we are in the night. And if we walk around in the night, we're going to be we're going to not make it. We won't get from one room to another, we won't be able to accomplish anything, we won't be able to eat, we won't be able to go from one room to another, we won't be able to see what is all happening around us. We can't function without a candle light in the night. And therefore our Lord says, Let your loins be girt, and let there be a candle in your hands, let there be a burning fire in your hands. Now, why do you hold this burning fire? So that you are waiting for the Lord to come. 
Because if you're not waiting for the Lord to come, you just go to bed at night, and you sleep until the morning, and then you wake up in the morning. However, our Lord is coming, and we know He's coming at the first watch of the night, or He's coming at the second watch of the night, or He's coming to the third watch of the night. Well, He is not coming during the day. But my Lord is coming during the night. And so we're going to discover that as long as there is night around us, as long as there is sin, as long as there is lie, as long as there is heresy, as long as there is wickedness, as long as there is some kind of darkness, we are in the night. And during this time of darkness, the Lord is going to come. He's going to make a visit during the time of darkness. So therefore, we must have our loins girt and a candle burning in our hands. And that this candle must be burning for what purpose? To await the coming of the Lord. What does it even say that, uh, you know, that you must do this in commemoration, do this the very holy sacrifice of the Mass? must be done in commemoration of me. And it shall be done until the Lord comes. So that the Mass will continue from the time of the crucifixion until the Lord comes on the day of judgment. That we have to prepare for the Lord's coming. And we look to the Lord's coming. A thousand years ago, St. Vincent Ferrer, the great preacher on the second coming of our Lord, over a thousand years ago he preached that the Lord is coming, the Lord is coming, the Lord is coming. And the Lord is coming is essential preaching of the, of the, of the, of the gospel, essential preaching of the, of, the, of the priest of God. The Lord is coming. He is coming in the first watch, he's coming in the second watch, he's coming in the third watch. And this can be considered the three different stages of the history of the world, coming in the time before Moses, coming in the time of the coming of Christ, and coming again at the end of the world. That Christ is coming. He will come to judge every single soul. But we don't know the time of his coming. He's also going to come to judge every single nation, and every single family, and every single city. He's also going to come and judge the entire world when it comes to an end at the time of the Antichrist. But he's coming to judge. And we are preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. That's one reason why St. Thomas Aquinas says, when you consider the other six sacraments, that is, all the sacraments except the Blessed Sacrament, we will note that these six sacraments, they are simply a preparation for the central sacrament that is one of all they are all centered upon, which is the Blessed Sacrament, the body and blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. All these things are preparation for the coming of Christ. So you are baptized, you might receive Christ. You are anointed at the end of your days that you might go and pass from this world into the presence of Christ in the state of, of, of sanctifying grace and in the state of perfection. And marriage is so there will be children who will be members of Christ and who will go to Christ. We must always be looking to his coming. Remember that St. Dominic fought the great heresy of the Albigensians, which was defeat, attacking the church and destroying it at the time of St. Dominic. But St. Dominic was not there just to defeat the Albigensians with their impurity and with their great lives. He was there to set the world on fire, which is what he did by bringing the rosary and by bringing his greatest gift and teaching, which was his son, St. Thomas Aquinas, to the entire church, that we might prepare for his coming and look to his coming. We must remember that we are not here only to fight against the Albigensians. We're not here to fight only against the Protestants, only against the revolutionists and the modernists, only against the communists and the masons and all the different heresies and false religions that will always be one form or another in this world. We must fight against those things only because they distract us and they turn us away from preparing for his coming. We must prepare for the coming of the Lord. Christ is coming. And St. <clears throat> Dominic was or we're going to set the world on fire, that we light candles. And what are we looking for? The coming of Christ. So that our eyes are peeled, like the soldiers on the wall, when they know that a scout has gone out, the city is besieged, and they know that a scout has gone out, and is coming back with a message, whether there's going to be reinforcements or not. They look at the enemy, and they shoot at the enemy, but their eyes are looking for, where is the scout? Where is the scout? When is that scout coming back? And they're watching at all times, because they don't know the exact time the scout is coming back. When they see the scout is coming back, they open the door and they allow the scout to come back into the city. And we have to recognize while our church is surrounded by all the enemies, we are looking with our eyes for the coming of the Lord. And the Lord is coming. He will come in his final judgment, of course, at the end of the world. But he is also coming 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, by her victory that's coming to us soon, and there's going to be the victory of Mary. We are preparing for the coming of the Lord, and that this, uh, and that therefore we keep candles burning in our hand, the candle of faith, the candle of faith which is only lit, and only, only gives out light. If it is burning on a wax, that is con being consumed, a wax that is not filled with itself. If the wax becomes exceeding hard, and if the wax will not allow itself to be consumed, the fire goes out. We must make sure that the wax does not allow itself to be consumed, but the wax uh, doesn't allow itself to become hard, but rather makes sure that it is consumed, that the light may continue to burn. So we are here to carry Christ and to burn ourselves up. Let the wax of our body, the wax of our years, the wax of our time, the wax of our health, the wax of our possessions, the wax of our thoughts and desires, let that wax burn away. Let that wax be disappear, and let the fire burn. And the more of the wax disappears, the brighter and brighter the fire. Because the fire of our faith, and the fire of the love that is in our holy faith, it burns most brightly when the wax disappears. And also, why do we let this fire burn? Because we're in a dark night, and we know that Christ is out there in the darkness coming to see us. He's out there in the darkness coming to visit us. And when he comes to visit us, and when he arrives, and when he comes to see us, are we going to be ready? We must always be ready. Also know this concerning the night. A very simple truth that we speak about with the contemplations of death. Every moment we are closer to death than we were before. Every moment we know that every man knows that they're going to die. It's an infallible certitude. And every, everyone knows that they're every moment closer to death. But we also know that Christ is coming to visit us. And Christ is coming to judge us. And Christ is coming to receive us. And what does he say in the gospel today? And may I say to you, that whomever I find watching, when the Son of Man comes, whomever I find watching, behold, the Son of Man will gird himself, and the Son of Man will, will set the table, and the Son of Man will serve those that are found watching. It will be a very, very joyful occasion for all those that are found watching. But as time progresses, we should recognize this. We are closer and closer to the arrival of Christ. But what does the devil say? You've waited and you've waited and you waited. He'll never come. You've waited, you've waited, you've waited. It's such a long time. If he does come, it's going to be way in the future. You've waited, you've waited and waited. So just, you should give up on waiting. And yet our own intelligence tells us. We know infallibly Christ is coming. And we, and we know that time has passed. Therefore, we know infallibly that we are closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the coming of Christ. And therefore, each moment, it is more and more and more important to keep the fire of divine charity, the fire of divine hope, the fire of divine faith burning inside of me. And don't let this fire to go out. That is more and more important as we burn, get closer and closer to the coming of Christ. And this is the great gift of St. Dominic, who ran as a dog around the entire world with a firebrand, with fire on both sides, lighting all the dry fields of the world on fire and lighting the entire earth. Because when Jesus Christ comes, where is he going to come? He's going to come to Friend, Nebraska. He's going to come to Boston, Kentucky. He's going to come to Podot, Nebraska, which is a place we always mention as the middle of nowhere. And he's going to come to every single place on earth. And he's going to come to Rome. And he's going to come to Jerusalem. And he's going to come to Moscow. And so where do we need the fire burning? Everywhere. And hence, what is our duty as Catholics? Take the fire and set the world on fire. And how are we, how we are here to set the world on fire. Christ said, I am here to set the world on fire. And what will I? But it did be enkindled. So if we are going to prepare for the coming of Christ, He's coming very soon, light the fire. When the planes are flying over and the boats are going by an island, what do the people do? We're on a stranded on an island, and the boat is going by in the old days. The plane is flying by nowadays. What do you do? Light a fire. Light the biggest fire you can, so that when the plane flies over, why is that island on fire? Then you see a guy down there. <laughs> because he is preparing for the coming. This is what we must do. As the world gets darker, we must light fires, and we must spread our arms, and we must sing aloud. Remember when a blind man was on the side of the road, and they asked him, Who is coming? There's a big noise, and there's a great crowd coming. 
And they said, oh, that's Jesus of Nazareth. He's a very holy man. He's coming. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They said, be quiet. He's preaching. Be quiet. He's performing miracles. Be quiet. Be quiet. And the more they told him to be quiet, he cried out the louder, Jesus, son of mercy, have mercy on me. He cried out the louder and the louder. And this is what we must do as we get closer and closer to the coming of Christ. He comes and he wants to see where is the fire? Where is the light burning? Is it burning in this house? Then I'll visit that house. Is it burning in this city? I will be in that city. But he will visit every city. And in whatever city there is no fire, he will send it down into hellfire. And whatever city there is fire, he shall visit that city. And he will be most happy that we are prepared. Will it be the city of my own soul, the city of my own family, the city of my own town, the city of my own country, the city of our whole world? Christ is coming. Remember the old t-shirts used to say, and we see in the 80s, our t-shirt, Jesus is coming. Look busy. When our Lord Jesus Christ comes, we had better be busy. We had better be preparing for his coming. And you are getting closer and closer and closer to his coming. That's what we know to be true. Therefore, we must be more excited, more anticipation, more wonder, more a little bit of preparation, as we know the Master and the King is coming. And when he comes, he's not, we're going to set a table for him. He's going to come in and say, you're not a very good cook. And he's going to take our food and throw it out. And then he is going to put his food on our table. And it's going to be so much better. And he will sit and eat with us in a grand feast. We better have something on that table. We better have something inside that house. We better have some light. And this is most necessary for us in our present battle and all the way until the ending of our days. We are every moment closer and closer to the coming of Christ. Let us carry the light and don't let go of that light. <clears throat> let it burn more and more. Let the wax of our time, the wax of our hearts, the wax of our bodies, the wax of our possessions, the wax of all things around us, let them all melt away that the fire may burn. And notice this mystery also about that fire. This fire is most mysterious. It burns and burns and the wax melts and melts and the wax melts and melts and the wax melts and melts. Well, then it never runs out. One of the miracles of Bishop Raphael, the, the uh, uncle, the granduncle of Father Raphael, he used to always carry candy in his pocket in Mexico during the time of the persecution. And three, four hundred kids would come and he'd pull out the candy and 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 pull out the candy and, the candy, and he never ran out of candy. He had the multiplication of candy. And so that he never ran out. He always reached in his pocket, and his pocket was never full, and he always never ran out. And what about those, what did he tell his apostles? How many loaves do you have? I've got five barley loaves. How many fish do you have? I've got two fishes. Good. Feed the 5,000. Ah. And so they went. They, we don't have enough barley loaves. We don't have enough fishes. No. They handed out the barley loaves. And 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 there were five baskets taken up at the end. For this wax, it burns in us. Let it burn. Let all the wax go away. And let all the wax go away. And let all the wax go away. And let all the wax go away. You come back and there's still more wax. Therefore, we must remember that Christ somehow knows how to replenish it. Somehow he does. The Blessed Virgin Mary knows how to preserve it. And that it must prepare for the coming of Christ by keeping that candle lit and let it burn and let all the things of ourselves be handed out to the good of souls and the good of our neighbor and God will somehow provide. He always has in the past. He always will until the end of time. We must simply await the coming of the Lord with great excitement, await the coming of the Lord with great hope and look to what our Lord say. There's going to be distress of nations. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be persecution. This sounds like not a good way to encourage people. And when you see all these things happen, lift up your heads and be joyful because your redemption is at hand. Well, we see the persecution coming upon us right now. We see the difficulties and oppression on every side. What are we to do? Lift up our heads for Christ is near. He is about to arrive. He's closer than he was before. Keep that candle lit. Keep that fire burning. And let this fire be burning and make sure that it's burning. Whenever the time comes, the Lord Jesus Christ decides, now is the time. Now I arrive at your house. In the middle of the night, we wait for him. And when he comes, there shall be great rejoicing. And remember also, 
When those people were being killed, the firstborn of Egypt, what did God command? Moses said, there have been nine plagues. Every After every one of the nine plagues, Moses said, your people can go. I mean, Pharaoh said, your people can go. And they all got packed up to go. And then he said, I changed my mind, you can't go. Now it is the tenth plague. And Moses said to the people, this plague is the final one. And now we're going to go. And we're not going to go like, like Pharaoh said the last time. We are going to go with treasures. We're going to go with gold. We're going to go with all the Egyptians around us singing our praises. We're going to go with them guiding us out. We're going to go with them giving us carts and giving us bullock carts, giving us all their treasures and gold. And we're going to go in great glory and in great haste tomorrow morning. Therefore, you will eat your great supper. You will eat your great pass. And I command everyone, do not put on your dinner clothes. Because remember previous to our times, people used to have dinner clothes and working clothes. Do not put on your dinner clothes, but put on your traveling clothes. And the head of the house, he must not eat with two hands. He must have a staff in his hand, a walking stick, which the bishop calls the crozier. He will sit in his hand, will carry a walking stick in his hand. And he will sit eating with a walking stick. And everyone will have their bags packed. And they will eat their pasch. And when the pasch is over, the angel of death will have made his visitation. And the firstborn of all Israel will be dead. And they will come out and say, you may now go and leave this land. You may now go to your promised land. And with great haste, the people, 600,000 men, about 2 million people, with great haste, got up in the morning and they left. We are now at the time where it's time to eat with your, with your traveling clothes. There have been nine plagues. And we waited after every plague for our church to be released. But it wasn't released. But there shall come a tenth plague. And after that plague, the church shall be released unto its glory. And this plague is upon us. It is near us now. We are coming to this tenth plague. Therefore, hold the staff. Keep your traveling clothes. Eat with haste. And eat the great feast. And be ready to go and to where Christ is going to lead us. And be sitting in the place waiting for Christ to come. Let the candle be lit. And let us be ready, be ready, be ready. Blessing God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.